morning. It's good to see everyone out this morning to receive from the Lord's Word and Sacrament. If you have your bold announcement, she'd ask you to please take it out for some announcements. As you are so doing, ask you to encourage you to please fill out the blue book at the end of the pew and pass it on down, return it back to its spot. Um, as we look to our bulletin here for this week, just want to make a brief mention. Following the service today, the Safety Committee meeting is going to have a brief meeting. And then the Sunday school teachers are going to have a continuing education meeting um, at 12 o'clock as well. This afternoon, the youth are gathering at Planet Pizza for just a time of uh, hanging out together. And uh, I know they've been very busy making lefsa and so forth. This is just going to be an uh, opportune time for them this afternoon to gather together at Planet Pizza. So that's for all LYF youth. Uh, look at the rest of the week. Look at the rest of the week. Monday, the church office will be open. So just a brief mention on that. Um, we have business as usual on Tuesday and Wednesday. But Wednesday evening, special mention to you that we're going to be having confirmation. And then at 5.15, there is a uh, Thanksgiving meal hosted by the Lutheran Hour Ministries. That is open to the entire congregation. And so I encourage you to come out for that. Uh, there's a sign-up sheet in the fellowship hall if uh, you can fill that out so they know how to prepare for the amount of people coming. But that is this Wednesday at 5.15, Thanksgiving meal for the whole church. And then our evening prayer service will be at 6.30. So our service will not be on Thursday, but it will be on Wednesday evening at 6.30 here at the church. So keep that in mind. Next Sunday, uh, invite everyone to uh, stick around after the service. Um, actually go out and get some food if you want. Come back to the service. And we'll decorate the church next Sunday for Christmas, uh, for the Christmas season, upcoming Christmas season as well. So keep that in mind next Sunday. Are there any other announcements that I may have missed or overlooked at this time that need to be mentioned? Well, we are the last Sunday of the church calendar. As you know, we have a church calendar we follow here at St. Paul's. We're the last Sunday of the church calendar, which next week will be the new year for us in the church calendar. But as we come to the very end of the church calendar, we hear some texts this, this morning about the second coming of Christ, the very end of the day. We're going to hear more about that in our readings here from this morning and our sermon as well. But with that in mind, let us sing our opening hymn of invocation, hymn number 515 first, hymn number 515. <laughs>
ask the congregation to please stand as we turn to the top of 184. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart to confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Amen. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all of my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you and justly deserved your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor, sinful being. Upon this your confession, I, by the virtue of my office, as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in this sin, and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all of your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We continue with the intro, it printed on the inside of your bulletin, sung to the tune of C.
be with you. Let us pray. O Lord, absolve your people from their offense, that from the bonds of our sins, which by reason of our frailty we have brought upon ourselves, we may be delivered by your bountiful goodness. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Congregation may be seated. The Old Testament reading for the last Sunday of the church year is from Isaiah chapter 65. Behold, for behold, I create new heavens and a new earth, and the former things shall not be remembered or come into mind, but be glad and rejoice forever in that which I create. For behold, I create Jerusalem to be a joy and her people to be a gladness. I rejoice in Jerusalem and be glad in my people. No more shall be heard in it the sound of weeping. And the cry of distress. No more shall there be in an infant who lives but a few days, or an old man who does not fill out his days. The young man shall die a hundred years old, and the sinner a hundred years old shall be accursed. They shall build houses and inhabit them. They shall plant vineyards and eat their fruit. They shall not build and another inhabit. They shall not plant and another eat. For like the days of the tree, of a tree shall the days be of my people, and my chosen shall long enjoy the work of their hands. They shall not labor in vain or bear children for calamity, for they shall be the offspring of the blessed of the Lord, and their descendants with them. Before they call, I will answer. While they are yet speaking, I will hear. The wolf and the lamb shall graze together. The lion shall eat straw like the ox, and dust shall be the serpent's food. They shall not hurt or destroy in all my holy mountain, says the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle is from 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Now concerning the times and, and the seasons, brothers, you have no need to have anything written to you. For you yourselves are fully aware that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. Well, people are saying there is peace and security... Then sudden destruction will come upon them, as labor pains come upon a pregnant woman, and they will not escape. But you are not in darkness, brothers, for that day to surprise you like a thief, for you are all children of the light, children of the day. We're not of the night or of the darkness. So So then, let us not sleep as others do, but let us keep awake and be sober. For those who sleep, sleep at night, and those who get drunk are drunk at night. But since we belong to the day, let us be sober, having put on the breastplate of faith and love, and for a helmet, the hope of salvation. For God has not destined us for wrath, but to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, so that whether we are awake or asleep, we might live with him. Therefore, encourage one another and build one another up, just as you are doing. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand. Holy Gospel, according to St. Matthew, the 25th chapter. Jesus said, The kingdom of heaven will be like ten virgins who took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish, and five were wise. For when the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them. But the wise took flasks of oil with their lamps. As the bridegroom was delayed, they all became drowsy and slept. But at midnight there was a cry, Here is the bridegroom, come out to meet him. Then all those virgins rose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish and the foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. 
But the wise answered, saying, Since there will not be enough for us and for you, go rather to the dealers and buy for yourselves. And while they were going to buy, the bridegroom came. And those who were ready went in with him to the marriage feast, and the door was shut. Afterward, the other virgins came also, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered, Truly I say to you, I do not know you. Watch, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. This is the Gospel of the Lord. With one heart and one voice, we confess the faith as expressed in the words of the Nicene Creed of 191. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not me, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in the one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Congregation may be seated for the first stanza of hymn number 588, and we'll call the children forward for Lessons for Lambs. In number 588, stanza 1. guys ever played hide and go seek yeah what happens you go and hide and then somebody looks for you right somebody finds you. how do you feel when they find you do you feel happy or sad or excited it's kind of fun when they find you isn't it they find you like there you are they come looking for you and they come find you next week we have the season of advent can you guys say advent advent the word Advent means coming, means coming to us, it means seeking. And so in the season of Advent, we hear about how Jesus comes to us, come to seek us out, how he comes to seek us out. He comes to us in that manger, being born in Bethlehem to live amongst us. Today, we're talking about Advent as well, but not his first Advent when he came in Christmas, but his second Advent, how Jesus is going to come back and get us again at the very end end of the age, the very last day. So kind of like hide and go seek, how we seek other people out. Our Lord Jesus, he seeks us out. He comes and finds us. He finds us in his birth. He finds us in the word and sacrament. And he comes and finds us and will take us home at the very last day. So in the sermon today, we're going to be listening about how Jesus tells us to have our eyes open, to be awake and looking and being ready for him to what? Come and find us. So unlike hide and go seek, where we go and hide, Jesus wants us to what? Not hide in the closet. He wants us to be out with our eyes up, our eyes open, looking and waiting for him to come find us. And in anticipation, excitement that he's going to find us. Yeah. Get 
about 20% of that. All right. Amen. All right. Well, let's pray and say thank you, Lord, that he seeks us out and that we get to have our eyes open. Heavenly Father, we thank you that this is not a game, that you come to seek us out and that you don't want us hiding. You want our eyes up, our eyes open, looking and waiting for you, Lord Jesus, to come and get us. Thank you that you do not leave us, that you will not forsake us, that you will come and get us yet again. In Jesus' name, amen. We'll dismiss the channel with a blessing and we'll turn to our hymn today, hymn number 516, hymn number 516. Jesus. Amen. In the late 1800s, a, a French a French philosopher published published excuse me published a fascinating book on crowd psychology. In this book, he stated that in every group of people, every crowd, every gathering of the masses, there was always get this there was always at least one mastermind in that group, at least one mastermind in that group. There's always a wizard behind the screen pulling on different levers. There's always a puppet master pulling on different strings of the crowd. Very briefly, this French philosopher stated that the mastermind typically has a rather complex agenda, a rather complex idea, something that he wants to accomplish. 
But in order to get that done, he has to then take that complex idea and boil it down to a simple, a simple idea, bite-sized ideas. Now these bite-sized ideas are then meant to pull at the heartstrings of the group of people, the masses. And so, and so the mastermind, he creates simplified ideas that elicit strong feelings amongst the group. That then sweeps the whole entire group, the whole crowd, into an emotional frenzy. And then once manipulated into an emotional frenzy, well, that mastermind has him exactly where he wants. He can turn that group whichever way he wants by simply feeding them more of that bite-sized ideas to manipulate their emotions. Now, even though this French philosopher was talking about crowd psychology back in the 19th century, it, it still exists today, believe it or not. For example, look at the influence of cable television and social media. With the snap of a finger, millions of people, millions of Americans can become instantly offended at the same exact time with a very complex story reduced, you got it, to a clever talking point and perhaps an edited movie about 30 seconds long. And with just a couple of phrases and a 30 second video, well, it is enough to conjure up intense emotions in a large group of people in America. That is right. Within about five or ten minutes, modern day news can get millions of Americans drunk on emotions. Hear that correctly, drunk on emotions, intoxicated with emotions, with little to no context or thinking. And once drunk on the emotions that are tied to the spirit of the age, well, we Americans are not sober in the moment. But we're overtaken by all sorts of feelings that simply, well, they simply sweep us along, like we are puppets. Puppets in a play or pawns in a game. The sad thing is that we're not even aware of this half the time. We just get swept along in our emotions, drunk on emotions. Now, perhaps we like to think that this church, the church in general, is not like the world. We like to think that the church is different from the world. However, in the American church, we often find people drunk on emotions as well, and drunk on, I should add this to boot, the comfort peddled by their mystical, spiritually abusive pastors. Heard that right, drunk on emotions and drunk on comfort. In other words, in the Christian church, pastors and spiritual leaders, they can come along and they can hand out comfort and gushy love and religious sentiments like they're handing out candy on Halloween evening. Free candy for everyone, free emotions, free comfort for everyone. In other words, they give out superficial assurance to make people feel good, which in result, many Christians become drunk on comfort. And once drunk on comfort that is tied to wretched theology, well, yes, well, these Christians are not sober in the moment, but are overtaken by all sorts of feelings that simply sweep them along like they're asleep at the wheel heading for a ditch. To the point... You and I must be careful. We must be careful in the culture and even in the church from becoming drunk with manipulated emotions and intoxicated with sappy comfort. We must guard ourselves from failing to be sober-minded, sober in the moment. Let me say this again. It actually makes a lot of sense how we can be taken advantage of in the culture. However, we must guard ourselves against indulging in so-called Christian comfort to the point where we congratulate each other and say this, Ah, we made it. Now we can take it easy. All is good. Peace, peace, peace. Love and love. Peace and love they abound. But you may say to yourself, isn't the Christian faith about comfort in the gospel? Yes, it is. It is indeed. However, in our reading from 1 Thessalonians, from our epistle reading from 1 Thess Thessalonians, we need to understand that some of the Christians at Thessalonica were acting like fools. In our epistle reading, they were acting like fools. To be perfectly clear, let me, let me capture what some of these Christians were doing with a modern paraphrase, a modern analogy. The Christians in the epistle of Thessalonica, they were skipping work and skipping school, 
They're going out on their lawns and a lazy boy pulling those that handle back feet up in that lazy boy on their lawn watching reruns of Dr. Phil and perhaps Oprah to boot while waiting for Jesus to come back in the sky. My dear friends, we need to listen up. This Christian faith, your Christian faith, is neither about being drunk on the emotions from political zealots nor intoxicated by the comfort of sweet-talking, gushy pastors. But instead, this Christian faith is about being sober, sober in Christ. It's about being sober-minded in Jesus. You see, in our reading from the Gospel of Matthew as well, we hear about being sober-minded. Jesus calls the idea of being sober-minded, he says it's wise. Yes, wise. As we heard in our Gospel reading, there were ten virgins, ten bridesmaids. Five, they were wise. They were sober-minded. Five, they were foolish. That is to say, the five foolish bridesmaids did not have oil. Indeed, those five bridesmaids did not have oil. They were fools. They were unprepared. They were block-headed. They were blind. They were obtuse, neglectful. Figuratively, they were drunk. Whereas the wise bridesmaids, they had oil. They were prepared. They were thoughtful. They were watchful. They were alert, attentive, sober-minded. They were not figuratively drunk. And so I guess we could summarize both the epistle of 1 Thessalonians and our gospel reading as well like this. To summarize all of this together. St. Paul's, sober up. St. Paul's, wake up. Know your sin... But know even more the one who forgives you of your sins. Wake up and know that you are mortal, but know even more the immortal one who will grant you eternal life. And finally, know this. Wake up. Know this. Jesus is coming back again. It may be today. Maybe this afternoon. Maybe tomorrow. Or maybe the next day. Which is the reason why he calls you and me to be sober-minded, to be alert, to be awake. But what does this look like, practically speaking? What does it look like, practically speaking, to be sober-minded? What does that look like, to be prepared and alert, to be sober-minded? The other day, I had a visit with a parishioner of St. Paul's, a member here, about this very topic. He said to me this, and I loosely paraphrase him, Indeed, I loosely paraphrase him. He said this, Pastor, when I wake up every morning, I say to myself, Today is the day that I might meet Jesus. Today may be the great last day in which Jesus takes me home, or I may meet him in holy death. Regardless, today may be the day that I see Jesus. This parishioner, he went on to say, so since every day is a day in which I might see Jesus, I live, I live it alive. Yes, I live it alive. I live it awake. Which means that I don't need to get tied up in the knots over petty little things, things in life, stuff in life. Indeed, I don't need to get tied up in knots over the petty stuff of life. I have a lot to learn from this parishioner. We also have a lot to ponder this morning. Your friends, if today is a day that we could possibly meet Jesus, which is entirely possible, does that not make everything different? Does that not change everything for you and me? Because you can meet Jesus today, every one of your encounters, every chore, every deed, every conversation, every moment is sanctified. This day is made holy by the very fact that today could be the day that you and I meet Jesus. And that means that every day is a sober day, an awake day, an alert day. But perhaps we could ask another question, and that is this. How do we get to the point of being sober-minded? How do we remain alert? Is there spiritual caffeine, if you will, that we can consume to jolt us up, to wake us up? Does it involve perhaps maybe sheer willpower to keep our eyes open 
and awake. Baptized saints, it gives me great joy. Great joy to tell you this. Listen up, hear this. You do not belong to the darkness. I want you to hear that. You are baptized saints. You do not belong to the darkness. Indeed, you are not in the dark. So how can you be drunk on emotions and drunk on comfort? You are sons of the light, not sons of apathetic comfort. You are daughters of the day, not daughters of manipulated emotions. So how can you be drunk on comfort and emotions? You see, when you were baptized, each and every one of you, when you were baptized, you were snatched from darkness and were placed into the light, into the light itself, indeed. You belong to Christ, and Christ belongs to you, which means that you do not sleep off through this life as many others do. It is true that many people indeed sleep and wander in darkness, but not you. Not you, baptized saints. You belong to the light, because you belong to Jesus. You are creatures of the day. You are baptized, you are forgiven, you are recipients of truth. And so you walk in the daylight, sober and dressed up in faith and love and hope that are already yours in Christ Jesus. So perhaps this all could be stated this way. Because of Jesus' word and sacraments, all of you are like a rock. Excuse me, you are like a house. Excuse me, you are like a house built on the foundation of a rock. As Christ's blood-bought church, why would you even consider standing upon shifting sand? Only fools do that. And you, dear saints, you are no fool. You have Jesus, and Jesus has you. Jesus is coming back again. Could be today, could be tomorrow, could be the next. And you, you're not in the dark. You are in the light. You're baptized, you're forgiven, you're redeemed in Jesus. And so, blessed baptized saints, stay put, remain in the light, for this is where you belong. You belong in the light, sober, alert, and awake, because Jesus is for you, and he's plucked you from darkness and placed you in the light, fully baptized, fully forgiven, fully awake in Christ. In the name of Jesus. Amen. As the congregation, please stand for the offertory. You may receive for the offering music as a way to remind of the offering pages at the back of the sanctuary. Offerings can also be mailed to the church office or conducted through the church website online.
Let us stand and pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Heavenly Father, your church eagerly awaits the return of her bridegroom. Grant that we would not grow weary. Strengthen us through your word and sacraments that we would ever hold fast to your promise of salvation, won for us by Christ our Savior. Lord, in your mercy, we give you thanks, O God, for for our Lord Jesus Christ and the reconciliation he brought. Make us a kingdom of priests who proclaim the riches of your name. For the benefit of all people, bless your holy church throughout the world, that your word may be freely preached to the joy and edification of every land and nation. Lord, in your mercy, greater of all, all and all and many things, in our midst we have been afflicted with pain, sickness, trials, and difficulties. Be merciful to those who are close to us. We pray this morning, especially for Brian, Barb, Kari, Carl, Celeste, Charlotte, Cindy, Craig, Don, Dwayne, Fern, George, Isabella, Jeff, James, Joellen, Julie, Callie, Ken, Kim, Manny, Marilyn, Margaret, Mark, Philip, Randy, Robert, Roger, Ruth, Shirley, Suzanne, Tim, Travis, Vonda, Marilyn and David, Diane and Alan, that they may be granted health or strength to endure their afflictions. Help us to see that when Christ returns in glory, our bodies will be incorruptible and immortal when he makes all things new. Lord, in your mercy, <clears throat> giver of the feast, you provide a foretaste of the divine wedding banquet at your son's table. Grant repentance and faith to all who commune this day, that they may receive his body and blood in a worthy manner and show forth his praise in their lives. Lord, in your mercy. O Lord, Heavenly Father, we gratefully remember the sufferings and death of your Son, Jesus Christ, for our salvation. Rejoicing in his victorious resurrection from the dead, we draw strength from his ascension before you, where he ever stands for us as our own high priest. Gather us together from the ends of the earth to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us, For to you alone we give all glory, honor, and worship. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God. Amen. As we continue to the service of the sacrament on page 194, we continue in repentance and faith to receive the gifts the Lord has for us in his body and blood given and shed for us. If you're not a member of the Lutheran Church of Missouri, send it to one of our sister denominations, We do still invite you to please come forward, kneel at the rail, and cross your arms to receive a blessing this morning. And if you'd like to partake of this wonderful gift to the altar, please talk to me after the service about membership here at St. Paul's. We continue on 194. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times, at all places, give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who out of love for his fallen creation, humbled himself by taking on the form of a servant, becoming obedient unto death, even death upon a cross. Risen from the dead, he has freed us from eternal death and given us life everlasting. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying,
Taught by the Lord and trusting in his promises, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins this do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Ask the congregation to please stand for the month of minutes. Son of the Lord, for he is good. Let us pray. Gracious God, our Heavenly Father, you have given us a foretaste of the feast to come in the Holy Supper of your Son's body and blood. Keep us firm in the true faith throughout our days of pilgrimage, that on the day of his coming we may, together with all of your saints, celebrate the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which has no end. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Lord be with you. Bless we the Lord. Bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Congregation may be seated for closing him, hymn number 922.
It's good to see each and every one of, of you out this morning to receive God's good gifts. I think it's summarized best in this section, as we heard here. It says this, this Christian faith is neither about being drunk on emotions from political zealots, nor intoxicated by the comfort of sweet-talking, gushing pastors, but instead, this Christian faith is about being sober in Christ. You are sober in Christ because you've been snapped from darkness and placed in the light where you belong. Rest in that light, rest in that gift. Alert always, knowing that Jesus is for you, coming for you, and will claim you unto himself for all of eternity. Amen.